welcome to FPW Schools in at our new home, Carl Shorten Boys Sports College. I am Bobby Davies, joined by Big Rich. And the privilege is all yours. These people have no behaviour whatsoever. But what's new, I am here to show them a new way. I just want to thank everyone for the, uh, the ovation I got coming out and the booze that Rich got. It was beautiful. We are starting with a big singles match. Look who is here, Rich. Malik, fan favourite here at FPW. Getting the crowd rolled already. Take it on. Who wants these fans anyway? Croydon is a wonderful place. Hey, hey, let Matt do his job. That's why I stopped. Matt, Matt has a job. Malik going to be taking on Connor Mills. There is a bit of heat between these two. I don't know if you remember, Rich, but on our last show, Connor Mills attacked Malik with some ladders. Rightly so. He deserved it. If I wasn't too busy keeping you at bay, I would have jumped in myself. I'm really glad we're, uh, we're in the back row and you've got to fight some way to get to the ring because you are trouble. Malik here, this audience loving what they see. Looking to take this one to Connor Mills. You can't take nothing to Connor Mills. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again. I apologise for the booze earlier in the audience. They thought I was Bob. Never call me Bob. Okay, Bobby. Connor Mills, one of the baddest men on the British wrestling scene. Looking to prove it once and for all. Not only is he bad in that ring, he is willing to take it to the next level. Ah, oh, he is the next level. Look, he's a beast of a man. I'll tell you what is the next level, that coat. You sound jealous. Now Mills, as if he wasn't lethal enough anyway, with his hands and his feet, he's a walking weapon. He decided to bring actual weapons into this. Look how generous he is, giving those people as ungrateful friends a front row seat of excellence. How ungrateful are they? I'll tell you what, he's got in and up in that ring in a breeze. He's going to walk through this. Now Mills is lethal, he is a lethal striker, he is a lethal technician. Malik has got a scrap for every inch of this fight. Mills will go low, Malik needs to rise above it, stay on top of him and not give Mills any room to breathe to win this one. Mills is only going low because he's so high, he has to come out to meet everybody at their level. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a fight. And we are underway, the first match here at FPW, schools in. Connor Mills, Malik tearing it up in the middle of the ring, trading forearms. I'd usually give Connor Mills the advantage in this, but Malik got the better of him with those forearms, sending Mills against the ropes. Charged by Mills. Oh, they are going blow for blow. They are starting red hot heads this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Lucha Mills, roll. Oh. Gives Malik a slap to the chops. Slap to the face. Connor Mills ducks low, sends Malik off. Reverse by Malik. Great springboard crossbody, wiping Mills out. And yeah, one in kind. You gotta slap me, Mills, I'll slap you right back. Is that what we call a receipt? I think it is with interest. Leg breaker by Malik. Getting some daylight between him and Mills now. Ahead of steam. Into a suplex. Explex. He lets him go. Drops the floor into the cover. This one could be over. Malik is a far from that, over. That X-Plex come from high. Connor Mills had to dig deep to kick out of there. He landed on the base of his neck. These are two men. They are leaving nothing back whatsoever. They are go, 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 and go. Malik lines up, aims for Connor Mills. Flying forearm to the jaw. Mills reverses, sends Malik flying across the ring. Back forearm by Malik. Mills cannot get an edgewise in this match. Everything he tries, Malik is cutting off. Oh, there you go. That's what we think about you. Commentators curse. That's what we think about you. Connor Mills, drag and screw off the top. Nice bit of sad language, love it. And now into the ankle lock, working that left leg. We have seen Mills implement submissions to that left leg recently in his career, working to injure his opponents. He has no scruples in doing so. Malik now on the defence, hanging on to the apron. Look for a springboard, Mills sees it coming, wipes him Beautiful. out. Beautiful. That was brutal. Connor Mills, efficient with those feet, a walking weapon. True grit, Connor Mills. That's the truest thing you've ever said, well done. Mills, Keep it up. Mills now wrapping Malik's knee around the middle turnbuckle. Vicious by Connor Mills. It's his middle name. Drop kick. And Malik left hanging by his knee. The tendons must be on fire. The audience here on top of Connor Mills. Does he care? No, he does not. Stop the match now. He cannot walk. Send him home to his mummy and, a, and some hot milk. 
if Malik says he can go, he can go. Two count for Connor Mills. Mills looking a bit disappointed that that wasn't over already. Malik holding on to that knee. The crowd trying to fire up Malik. Mills having none of it. Mills it's not going to work. Mills dominating, holding the centre of the ring. Connor's bad enough by himself. Now he's got a man who's wounded in one leg. You're right there, and I don't say that often, but he's I'm always like, right. He is like a lion stalking his prey. Connor Mills fully in control now. Malik scrapping from the ground up, has nothing. Just a knee wrench. Malik in serious pain. Connor Mills taking time to showboat. Getting into it with a member of the audience. That's right, come here. <laughs> I'll say this. Say what you want, but in the ring. If that audience member took Connor Mills' challenge, it'd be the worst mistake they ever made. Mills snap her out of the corner. Just punting the back of Malik. Speaking of mistakes, are you wearing shorts again? I'm oh, always wearing shorts. Come on, mate. How long must it's I tell you with you? cover. Malik kicks out there. That was never going to win. Mills knows that. He's just trying to prove a point. Point proven. You leave my shorts out. I wish you would as well. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are, FPW. Into the ankle lock. And you notice a tra ankle lock traditionally done from the other side, but Mills is also twisting the knee, adding extra torque. Malik trying to fight from the ground up into the death lock. We are seeing some beautiful execution here of the ring prowess of Connor Mills. That foot also stepping on the knee above the tendon, putting extra pressure on it. Connor Mills has had probably, probably the best striking game in British wrestling for a, a good couple of years. Now improving his technical fundamental, his submissions game. He's going to be unstoppable. Just slapping the face of Malik, the disrespect. He slapped the sweat out of him four ways from Sunday. If you're just joining us, you may think this is the main event. This is not. This is just another day in the park for Connor Mills. Mills looking to bridge out. Mistake. Malik takes the opportunity, just laying in the right hands that ground and pound. Malik giving himself some breathing space, may have, may have knocked a tooth out of Connor Mills. This godforsaken audience keeps tapping. Attention seekers a lot of them, a bit like you actually. That's rich coming from you. Low bridge by Malik, Mills heads to the apron but clings on, looks to come in with a shoulder barge, Malik reverses. Says the guy wearing shorts and the cap. I can't believe I can put an attention seeker by Big Rich. Off the ropes. Drop by Malik while Mills is tied up. Pull him in, cover him, Malik. This is your chance. I'm sure you've been called worse in your life, and you will. If not, let me know, and I'll gladly chip in. Malik lining up from the outside. What a springboard elbow, vaulting elbow from the outside. Great move by Malik into the cover. This could be it. The talk as he cut round on that rotation. Connor Mills will not be beaten that easy. He's digging deep, but he's still in the fight. Malik now finally got a, a bit of control in this match. Connor sucking wind. Could all be a ruse that Connor Mills bases himself, cannot be powerbomb, cannot be pile driven from there. Holding on to that injured knee. Great tactic by Connor Mills. Knee breaker, shin breaker. Another dragon screw. A bit of a different technique on it, spinning Malik's entire body with a dragon screw. Beautiful. You said it was a ruse. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, yes, it was. Stop the match now. Mills heading up to the second rope, lining up Malik. He can't walk. What good is a man with one leg in a fight? One, a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest, as the old cliche goes, Rich. Mills. That's not what I said. Mills lining up his target. Looks for, looking for a double axe handle. Malik saw it coming, drop kick out of the sky, an anti-air missile. Now, how smart was that to do a drop kick with one leg? Who's really going to feel the pain there? Connor Mills has taken to the outside to try and get some breathing space. To your point, Malik has given himself some time, trying to get some feeling back in that knee. This is tense. Now this moment is important for Malik. How he chooses to act can finish his match with a vaulting body press over the top. I think Mills moved out of the way. Or I can't see from this angle now. I think he must have caught him on the way down. I think he got some of him, but I think his leg got a lot more than what he wanted to. This is the challenge for Malik now. Every hard bit of offense, he's got to do damage to his own knee. You cannot base yourself if your knee is injured. He is on one good will. Lines up Mills, tries to get ahead of steam, but cannot do it. Limping across the ring. Needs some adrenaline in that bone. Connor Mills, explosive. 
shotgun, that Claymore to the face, wipes out Malik. Orange crush, this one is over, into the cover, thank you, oh my god. Malik. That was as close to a free you can ever get. Malik with more heart than you can anticipate, back into the ankle lock by Mills, choosing to go for that left leg again, wise choice by Mills, he had hold of the right and decided that I've been working on the left, I'm going to stick with the left. Connor Mills wants a souvenir and his leg is going to be that souvenir, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to see walking down the road of a leg. Malik trying to reach that bottom rope. Mills pulling back, trying to not allow it. Malik finally gets there. He is one wrench away from taking it clean off the bone. Connor Mills knows exactly how far he can bend these rules until this match is thrown out. Malik holding onto the bottom rope for dear life. Ends a Guri by Malik. Catches Mills in the back of the neck. Mills. Rebound inside Larry. out. That lariat comes from underneath. It doesn't come at you, it comes up at you. It is lethal into the cover. This one's over. I keep calling this is over for Malik. I cannot see how he stays in it, but he has all credit to him. The amount of heart Malik has shown in this match, unbelievable. He keeps showing it and kind of keeps taking it out. How much punishment can he take? How many more ideas has Mill got to keep Malik down? At what point does the referee say enough is enough? Mill's now just punching the knee. Grounding the other knee as well. Headbutts to the knee. Punch, headbutt, knees. He's assassinating that knee. Connor Mills, a proficient pro wrestler and a very proficient MMA fighter, grounding Malik, holding him down, making sure he cannot fight back up. One thing you forgot to mention, he is mean. Like your knees. You're obsessed, I swear. I think, I think, I think you're just a bit, a bit obsessed with my shorts. They're offensive, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back again. Mills loading up Malik. Probably looking for that burning hammer. Malik, the ground cell, gets the weight down into the backslide. Cover one, two, and three. No, Mills getting out just before the count of three. Referee Kyle, not quite getting it into the roll-up. This could be it. Now, surprise roll-up. This could be the way he catches Mills. Can he hook it in deep enough? Check. Oh. Mills goes low with that drop kick to the knee. Malik. How much longer can he stay in this one? He gives it, but can he take it? Punch just to the jaw. Now, trying to knock Malik out, I think. Testing, testing the jaw of Malik. Up on the mounted punches, just wearing out the forehead. Malik doesn't look like he's got anything left. He looks barely conscious. The rope's holding him up. Those, those punches are solid. Mike Tyson would be jealous of those. Mills grabbing Malik by the chin, lines him up, looking for another chop. Oh, that rung out around the Carl Shorten Boys College Sports Hall. Malik though, fired up. Mills begging off. Malik has had enough of this. The adrenaline has kicked in. Malik has found that spot and he is gonna wear Mills out. Malik digs down deep, finds the heart to keep the beat on Mills. Mills, is he raking the eye? He's doing no such thing. Mills. Did the referee call it? Oh! Kyle, referee Kyle gets a chest chop. Mills calling for the disqualification. <laughs> Malik gets disqualified for the win. A win is a win. Now, whether that was the tactic by Mills or not, there was, there was contact between referee Kyle and Malik. Malik, uh, referee Kyle explaining. He was going to win anyway. Mills begging off Malik. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Mills one more time taking the low road post match, taking the hurt to Malik, sending referee Carl out of the ring. Malik just in the centre of the ring, prone. What is Mills looking for? He's gone under the ring, and who knows what you find under a pro wrestling ring. You don't get in the ring with Connor Mills and leave the same. What is that? That is, we are in Carl Shorten Boys College. That is a school desk. He has put Malik's left in it, put it in the crease of that, in the fold of that, that desk like a steel chair. He is looking to pulmonise the knee. I told you where the souvenir. And he's coming to get it. Paul Robinson is here, taking the desk off of Malik's ankle. Challenging Mills. Mills in the 
past using chairs and ladders in this war with Robbo and Malik. Now a table. This audience telling Mills one thing, Robbo is going to kill him. Connor Mills is hard as nails, but if there is one man in the FPW locker room that is harder, you got to say it's Paul Robinson. A bit violent, aren't they? Going to, going to kill him? He's got a family to feed, he's got bills to pay. He's doing his job. Robbo making the save for his buddy Malik. Thank God for Robbo. That could have been Malik on the shelf for some time, maybe even his career. Connor Mills had had his way. The way he's walking, he'll, he'll probably need a shelf. Thank you, Robbo, for making the save. Connor Mills taking it low. Malik putting up a hell of a fight. Was screwed when you think about it. That was not a fair assessment to win that match. He hit the referee. By accident. He hit the referee. Yeah, Mills moved out of the way, causing the hit. He hit the referee. Yeah, okay, we're gonna... It's not my fault, he, he lacked self-control. We're gonna have to agree to disagree. Rules are rules. What kind of carnage are you trying to create here, sir? This is why I call you Bob. I'll be having words about it. here at the Carl Shorten College, very appreciative of that first match, and what a match it was. <laughs> Referee Martin Ravenson here to take control of this situation. Hopefully he's tougher than the last one. Hey, if you follow my Instagram, you know he's hedge. He's got the beard for it. Oh, he's a walking Viking, mate. Another big singles match. Can he count to three? Could you let me talk about the next match as opposed to taking quips at Martin, please? You sound jealous. Back to your knees, shall we? Rocco Garcia is going to be taking on the veteran Shah Samuels. Here they are. Fabio Romano, Freddie Blackstone leading the way for the Lions Pride. Here is Rocco Garcia, the man who will be competing in this match. The fans not big, big on the Lions' pride. The fans don't know what they want. Say what you want about the Lions' pride, they are an impressive triumvirate. Freddie Blackstone, the big man, the technician Fabio Romano, high-flying. And then you've got the all-rounder Rocco Garcia here to ruin your day. Magnificent. And the three of them combined are unstoppable. Hey, I'm just going to say this, you're going to need to keep an eye on Blackstone and Romano at ringside. Oh, Fabio also told me, uh, if you're going to talk about his name, you need to roll his R's, so uh, if you could just do that for me. Delegating as always, abdicating your position. Fabio Romano, I'm here. come on. Fabio Romano, that's how you say it, take notes. Look how impressive this triumvirate are. Roll that off, please, sir. Garcia giving instructions to his, his teammates who look like they're going to be hanging around for this match. Much to the detriment of the veteran Shah Samuels. Throws his collar at Matt. Who likes Matt anyway? The East End Butcher going to have his work cut out for him here. Shah's going to wish he stayed in the Butchers. And the fans ready to welcome the former FPW champion, the East End Butcher, Shah Samuels. He's here. Just because no one likes 
to you that much. Hey, what's he doing here? Now, Blackstone already eyeballing Shaft Samuels. Shaft spotting it though. If I was Blackstone, I'd be furious. I'm coming for a fight, and the guy's out here taking pictures. Literally taking pictures. Listen to that East Ovation. How loved have you got to be to get an East chart here in the South? These fickle fans will try anyone. Shaft Samuels, not afraid of anyone. The Lions Pride hanging out around ringside and Shah does not care. This is going to be an interesting one. Shah Samuels, I'd usually give the tip of the hat. He's got a lot more experience, he's got the power, he's got the technique. But Garcia has got his army with him. Garzia, that cocky smirk. He does it rather confident, I love it. I don't think he should be taking Shaft Samuels this lightly, even with his buddies at ringside. If you come into if you come into fight, you have to fight. You can't think to yourself, I'm not gonna win. You have to go for it. Shaw getting distracted by the rest of the Lions Pride. Garzia, club to the back. Goes low, kick to the gut. All that experience and he's still got caught out. Chest chop. Taking control early, thanks to the distraction by Fabio Romano and Freddie Blackstone. But those big right hands, each one landing his mark straight in the face of Garzia. Splash! Shaw Samuels, what a clothesline! Garzia down to the mat, Samuels is taking control. Wearing out Garzia, elbows getting the fans to count along with him. Fabio. Trying to urge Rocco to get in this match. PK to the spine. Into the cover. Garcia kicking out at one. I don't know if Shah actually thought he was going to get him, but forcing Garcia to kick out. The, the, the lack of respect of that pin is unbelievable. Elbow drop. And a second by Samuels. Don't you love to see a wrestler having a good time in a match? Calling for it, he's gonna head up top. A good time in the match. This is a fight. I want to see violence. The fans let him know. Freddie Blackstone up on the apron. Giving Garcia just enough time to squeeze out the leg. <laughs> Kick him, hit him, punch him. Garcia just laying in those punches. As he should do. Top of the head. That punch is top of the head will make you disorientated. Or leave you wobbling. Even the numbers game, Shaw Samuels fighting from the ground up. Chest chops and punches. Samuels set, trying to set Garzio off. Reversal. Garzio with that, that lower center of gravity planted his feet and sent, sent Shaw Samuels flying. Then a back elbow. And that sent off. Samuels struggling to breathe in the center of the ring. Kick out by Shaw. This match is going one way now. Every time Shaw gets some momentum, another member of the Lions Pride distracts him. The numbers go truly on Rocco Garcia's side. Loads up Shaw in a chest chop. So when, when it comes to it, Shaw's got all this fan support, but Rocco has friends support. Where's Shah's friends, eh? I'll tell you where they are. He's pushed them away with his massive ego. Shut that. Shah has plenty of friends. He likes to have his matches on his own. He likes to, to do things by himself, to wrestle his own court, to win things by his own merit. No the man is an island. Not be said for the Lion's pride. Great technique by Garzi, though, has to be said. After the set, he's worked on the chest, trying to keep the air out of the lungs. The lungs are your gas tank. That final one took him down, I feel that from here. Off the ropes. Got going again. Ah. Knee to the back of the neck. Now working over the back with a boot. Just disrespecting Charles Samuels, the legend of the British wrestling. Garcia in the face of referee Martin.
The fans trying to get Charles Samuels back into this one. Garcia loads him up. That is a million dollar dream. Cobra clutch, whatever you want to call it. It is in deep. That is a lethal submission. Charles trying to break the grip. Pulling on the right arm, not let Garcia sink it in. If he, lets, if he gets it sunk in, this could be over. It's not pretty, it's not sweet, it's not clever, but it gets the job done. Shaw managing to get away using those punches, but Garcia, underhook suplex, sends Samuels across the ring. This could be it. That was He's a keeping feat. the pressure on his neck and his chest, those vital areas of the body. Shaw now trying to get the fans behind him. They've been vocal the entire time. There it is. He's got the Cobra clutch locked in. What is Charles Samuels going to do? Man trying to get his feet back underneath, he manages, back on his feet. Overhand right punches, trying to break the grip of Rocco Garcia. Just a judo style throw over the top, rolls him off, Charles Samuels sidestep. Double axe handle. Rocco's back on his feet though. No double axe handle, wiping out Garcia. He's back again. Right hand. The chance of ease ringing around the Carl Shorten Boys College. Sends Rocco off the ropes, powers him up. World's strongest slam into the cover, that's over. Rocco Garcia, just enough to kick out. I have to admit, Shah impressed me there. I didn't think he would get him up. The power of Shah Samuels, impressive. Shah looking better than he's ever looked, looking jacked, looking ripped. Is he paying you to say this stuff? I'm just using my eyes, Rich. I said he's good, calm down. Go on. Oh God, every time I see that you're on the bill with me, it's hard, right? Charles partial Samuels. commentating, ladies and gentlemen. Charles Samuels up to the second row. Ready back side, tries to get involved. Diving out off the second row. Garcia is done. This could be over. Garcia powers that right arm. Oh, he with little faith. Charles looking shocked. Not ready to get to him, though. Thinking about his next move. Char is a tactician. Playing chess. He is two moves ahead at all times. Looks to take Garcia up. Garcia reverses. German suplex. Beautiful. Two moves ahead, on your back. Mishinoku driver into the cover. Charles Samuels kicking out, barely rolling out. Two big power moves, dumping Samuels down. I think what we're seeing here from Rocco is he's going for it. He understands who Shah is, we all know who Shah is. But Rocco's had to make a name for himself. He's had to make a statement and he's gonna do it at the expense of Shah. Rocco Garcia is impressive enough on his own. He doesn't need these clowns, Fred o Freddie Blackstone and Fabio Romano on the outside to help him. He could have, he could, he's got a chance to get Shah his own accord, but he needs to cheat. Do you call him clowns? Say it to his face. You know what? I'm gonna call him now. I'm gonna call him over. Say it to their faces, will you? Only when Shah gets over here. And that's why you wear shorts. These chest shots wearing out Shah. Shah not letting it get to him. Shaw challenging Blackstone, sidestep. Blackstone, this one is over. Shaw Samuels, no one kicks out of the Shaw Samuels spine buster. What an effort by Samuels. He dug deep, overcame the three on one situation, and he wins this one clean as a whistle. That was a battle when he's won it. But the war has just begun. <laughs> Fabio Romano, the Lions Pride jumping. The fans' favourite. Charles Samuels, three on one, this beatdown. It's in the name, it's what Lions do. The crowd letting them know what they think. Fabio Romano laying in the punches. Blackstone, knee to the chest. Shah is not getting out of this one. It is three on one. Rocco Garcia acting like he won the match. You didn't win the match, Garcia. Charles Samuels won this one fair and square. Yeah, this crowd letting their Ryan's pride know exactly what they think. I don't think they care. They should care because Garcia just lost that match to Charles Samuels. Heck of a spine master by Samuels. But who's standing tall? Who's got his hand in the air? Who's suffering on the floor and who's standing tall? But what does the record book say? Samuels the last one right. Charles Samuels definitely backs down.
This school, is As we came to this school, he's on the roster. The big man, Lee Wine Law. Here he is. He's the most jacked man on the FPW roster. Look at that physique, Rich. And he's here to side with Shaw Samuels against the Lions Pride. It's two on three, but I fancy their chances. Levi. Fabio, nearly being left to the walls. Rocco Garcia telling his teammate to get the hell out of there. He's not going to accept after the match he's just had. Blackstone, Romano. The Lions pride didn't come to fight Levi. Garcia sends Romano in. He's making these rules. Fabio looks a bit tentative. Rightly so. The size difference is unreal. Levi Muir, Shaw offering to stay at ringside. Levi saying, go get yourself checked out. Shaw taking out the Lions pride, taking out Blackstone. Samuels and Garcia, oh, oh, Levi Muir, shoulder tackle to Fabio Romano, the big man already having his way. Power, delayed vertical suplex, Romano's going nowhere, the blood rushing to his head. This is not fair, he didn't come into wrestling, he's not in the cards. Suplex, look at Levi Muir, that specimen. How would you feel going into a fight unprepared? Where's management? Where's Matt when you need him? How would you feel going into a fight thinking you got a singles match and two clowns are on the outside? Probably how you feel wearing shorts every day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an unscripted match. Paul Romano, he came out to support his friend and now he's getting judged by Levi, the local boy. Fabio, fine from the back. Definitely the home support for Levi Muir. He went to this college, he went to this school. What did he learn? Well, You're cowards. The jump in a fight from behind. He learned how to kick some arse, and that is exactly what he's going to do. Off the ropes, Romano tries to close eye. Levi just flies through it. Cross body. Romano had no chance. It's the cover. This be it. Romano kicking out. This is a disgrace. Imagine someone with the muscle density of Levi Muir just running you over like that. That has got to be painful for Fabio Romano. On behalf of Romano, I'm going to send management a strongly worded email. No, I think you should take it up with Levi Muir personally. Fabio raking the eyes, pulling at the nose of Levi Muir, getting out of that fireman's carry position. Going for the knee, he twisted the knee there. The knee joint very delicate. Now Fabio just working the knee. Fabio taking the low road, winding Levi Muir's knee around the middle rope. Look at Fabio getting a bit of momentum off the ropes and just kicking the knee. Fabio might be small in stature, but he is a, he's a technician, he's a playmaker, he does know what he's doing in the ring. And he's willing to go low to do it. Levi though, overwhelming power. Gut shot, gut shot, gut Those shot. Those punches are a bit low, the referee needs to get. And he just builds Romano across the ring. Shocking. This Romano is big, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Levi needs to not give Fabio that gap to attack the knee again. Loads him up for the scoop slam. Romano out the back. And again, shot to the knee. You all think the sore knee would have what give the base of Levi Muir a wobble there, allowing Fabio the chance to slip out the back. Fabio holds on to the knee, holds on to the ankle, so he's got control of the knee, shall I say. Fabio working the knee joint, working the ankle joint. Two very tender areas, ligament damage. The power of Muir, one more time coming into play. Launches Fabio across the ring, kicking him off. High knee into the nose. Everyone's the same size when you ain't got no legs. Beautiful. 
code breaker off the middle. Took the air out of him. Into the cover, this could be over. Is Levi even... I'm about to question if Levi's even conscious. He made a mistake there by pinning his shoulders and not his legs. Yeah, the, well, Levi has muscles where people don't have places, so the fact that he used his legs to kick out, not surprising. Levi has a right to wear shorts. You don't. You have no muscle. But I got some cool tattoos, and that's why I wear, no, I wear them. Into the, into the death lock by Romano, tying that knee up. Subjective statement. The knee of Levi Muir must be in agony. What I will say is, with more muscle density, the ligaments can be more tender. Once you've twisted the muscle, like the, 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 the weight of the muscle twisting that ligament, that's going to cause more damage. There's more to fight than muscles, there's a science behind it. The there more muscles go. you have, the more oxygen you need. Tell that to the back of Fabio Romano's head that just got slammed into the canvas. Levi has to do what you can to stop Romano. What a clothesline! And another one, Romano stood no chance there. But Levi has to end this quickly. Levi Muir needs to get that adrenaline flowing to finish this one off. Swings wildly, misses, Romano, cross body, caught by Levi Muir. Boss! Man, slam! This one is done. No, Fabio Romano. All credit to him, kicking out of that. He is a cardio slam. king. That small frame goes a long way. Hey, we say how Jack Levi is. I mean, Fabio's pretty shredded too, but he just doesn't have that size that Levi Muir has. Loads him up into the climbers carry position. Looking for a TKO, Fabio holds on though, sleeper hold. There you go, as you said, depriving the muscles of oxygen. Muscles are great, but if you can't breathe, oh, it's just extra weight on your body. Back. Spear! Spear! That was devastating. Yeah. You thought uh, Levi Muir was having trouble breathing, how about Romano? Loads him up. Two! In the middle of the ring. Look at the limp body of Fabio Romano. Can he kick out of this one? I don't think so. Your winner, Levi Muir. I do like Romano, but Levi, he is jacked. I have to, I have, I have to give the devil his due. And I call him the devil because he, he didn't fight like a man. He came through the back door and stuck in and kept in the fight on a defensive Romano. a one-on-one -on -one fight, not like our last match, not like where the Lions tried, attack Charles Samuels three-on-one. He a, wasn't prepared. In a fair fight, Fabio put on a hell of a match against Levi Muir. Had a tactic, he worked the knee. Did it pay off? No, Levi Muir got the win. Well, that is a fair fight, and Fabio Romano held his own. Levi Muir with a big win, though. There's, there, there's no hope for you, is there? Between you and Matt, I really don't know what I'm doing there sometimes. Well, now we got that impromptu match out of the way. Matt looking exhausted. There's Mr. Impromptu himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt's back in the ring. Levi rightly taking the praise from the FBW faithful. The crowd well and truly behind Levi Muir, the big man winning this singles match. Twitch and Cobalt. 
as much as I like nasty and mean, I do have my thresholds. I am avoiding the eye contact at all costs. Richie's scared that he should be. The monsters of the apocalypse. Two big, big men. Should that be big, big monsters taking on two high flyers today? I am without a shout, unfiltered, unashamedly scared. We've seen Twitch in action in the last few months. He has laid a beating on his opponents. The air of mystery around the big man. But we have not seen Cobalt recently. He is here to tag with a fellow monster to take it to the young high flyers, the flying aces, who we saw pick up a victory recently. Look at these men, they're monsters. I know I'm stating the obvious, but you just have to remind yourself, these are, these are men. Who in their right mind is going to want to fight them? Who in their right mind? Well, the flying aces for one. I hope they do have wings. Archie Cole and Aaron Cruz are here, and they're going to they're gonna take it to the monsters as best they can. These young high flyers have a lot of heart and a lot of passion, and they can really go. The monsters are in the middle of the ring, talking tactics. Flying aces yet to the risk. Here they are. Archie Cole and Aaron Cruz. Talking tactics, talking dinner plans. What bowls are they going to eat first? What ligaments are they going to break off first? That's what they're trying to figure out. the flying aces dry it up full of energy that is how they're going to get into this match if they've got any chance of beating these two monsters they've got to be quick they've got to be fast they've got to use this energy they got the fans firmly behind the flying aces Cole, the Iceman Aaron Cruz, getting the FPW faithful behind them. I don't know if I've told you this, Rich, I love tag team wrestling. You haven't told me that, and if you did, I'll probably forget anyway. But I don't know if I've told you I love t tag team wrestling. And I just, is there an echo in here? Probably the thoughts between your ears. Aaron Cruz. You've got your hard work. Aaron Cruz. In the all black and white trunks. Archie Cole with that dash of red on his. This young team. Got a big mountain ahead of them. Two big competitors. Lots of power versus lots of speed. Someone get the catch up. There's a feast happening right now. Cobalt staring down Archie Cole. I'll tell you what this looks like. In Barbados, have, there's, a, there's a meal called Flying Fish. I've been to Barbados, but I didn't try Flying Fish. Well, the apocalypse are going to try these flying aces now. They're going to eat them like Flying Fish. And he said you can go to my country. I went on a cruise. It was lovely. That makes sense. We couldn't tolerate you coming in for long. The Monsters of the Apocalypse, Twitch starting this one out for the big men, Archie Cole for the Flying Aces. Cole eyeballing Twitch, but keeping an eye on Cobalt, the wariness of Archie Cole, cockiness as well, challenge again, drop kick to Cobalt, Twitch misses wildly, low bridge, look at Archie Cole. Man, Aaron Cruz, flipping sense on, wipes out the monsters. Cobalt trying his best to stand his ground, but the momentum just too much. Archie Cole. These flying aces are, are, put, are putting in a good showing. Whoa! What a flip over the top rope. Flying Tope from an 
Archie Cole, the Maverick. This is what the Flying Aces have got to do. They've got to stay on top of the big men, move quickly, fly high, hit hard. The second they allow the Monsters of the Apocalypse to get in this match, it could be over. Great avoided by Archie. Rolling sent on across the back of Twitch. Cole now feeling it. Cobalt though gets the blind tag in. Goes wild. Archie Cole sidestep. Step up into Guri. Tags in Aaron Cruz. Forearm to Twitch. You're running European uppercut to Cobalt. These young lads, the Flying Aces, using a, a little launching pad for it into Guri. Drop kick. What a double team action. Double knee to Cobalt. Cole now in for the cover. Just that power of Cobalt, the launching Cole. The crowd firmly behind the Flying Aces. Cobalt just falls into attack to Twitch. This is where the inexperience of the Flying Aces come in. They needed to stay on top of Cobalt so he didn't get that tag. He had taken a beating, but he allowed the fresh man to get tagged in. Cole sidesteps, high knee. Springboard. What's he going to go for? Hold him. He's got him. He's got him. He's got him. Dinner time. Power bombed. Reversal by Twitch. The opening the big man needed. Reversing that springboard Hurricane Rana. And Archie Cole is a splat on the ring map. Into the leg drop. This could be over. Just the weight of Twitch's leg. Are you going to earn your money today, Rich? Am I doing this on my own? Come on. I'm giving you time to grow some wings. What? I am in awe and I am scared to say the wrong thing but they might come over here and start with me. Headbutt to Archie Cole from Twitch. It's all right, I'll sit you down and teach you all the wrestling moves, don't worry. Then before after you put some clothes on. Aaron Cruz doing his tag team mate a disservice trying to get in the ring. Leaving referee Martin no choice but to get him back out. There's Ned to Cole getting worked in the corner by Cobalt. What do you call that? You call that beating him up. Tag to Cobalt. For like knocking him down. The two big men working as an amazing tandem here, the monsters of the apocalypse. You call that picking the bones. That's not a wrestling move, that's how winners fight. Cobalt just jaw jacking Archie Cole in the corner. I've got to give the Flying Aces credit. I'll be running back home if the apocalypse came towards me. And his head just rang and moved the ring when he hit him. Hip attack. The Bye, ring Cobalt. moved. Hey, when you're a man that big, you're going to move a wrestling ring. If the ring moved, God knows what, how his neck is feeling, how his head is feeling, how his spine is still in place. Hey, he's going to wake up tomorrow with a headache. There's no doubt about it. Cole, I don't think he's going to wake up with a head full stop. Cole, put across the middle rope by Twitch. Taking the low road, referee might give him a five count. Cobalt already in position to take advantage. Classic tight team wrestling. You got to give it to the monsters. They know what they're doing when it comes to tag team tactics, even if they take the low road. The synchronization was amazing. Back elbow by Twitch. And another one. I'm very uncomfortable when Twitch looks in this direction. I hope he's looking at you and not me. Archie Cole, loaded up by Twitch. Just a scoop slam in the center. Archie Cole's spine must be on fire. And a little bit of, of a quiz for you, Rich. What is uh, what is the spine connected to? It's connected to the neck, which is connected to the head. God knows how Archie Cole is. Oh, inside out. Landing. Inside out. Someone call his mummy. Landing right across their shoulders, the base of the neck. He's finished. You can see the monsters of the apocalypse tactics. They're working on the spine, working on the back of the head. He's finished. Give the poor guy a chance. I'll, I'll give Archie Cole credit, he has held, he held on to that second rope, made sure he couldn't be pinned, but that back club might put him right back on the mat. He tried to fight back, and one club to the back, as you said, took him straight back down again. Aaron Cruz reaching out, trying to give Archie Cole someone to tag, trying to give him a break from this match. Twitch the monster, pushes Archie Cole back to his own corner, into the cover. He may have knocked the sense out of him. He probably doesn't know when to stop. He wants to quit, but his brain isn't working. Well, I'm not surprised after that hip attack, but give the boy credit, he's got a lot of heart. 
using Cobalt's head. It's tougher than his arm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an annihilation. He had a choice there to use the turnbuckle on Cobalt's head, and he decided that Cobalt's head was a bit thicker. Sending Archie Cole across the ring. Last thing Archie Cole needs is Twitch landing. No! Boot up! Twitch! When you get hit in the jaw, your whole head gets rocked. Grit your teeth, Twitch! Over the top goes Cole. Bit of momentum. Tries to avoid Twitch trying to stand in his way. Cole doesn't let it stop him. And just flattens Archie Cole. I don't think he understands. He's in there with a monster. Into the cover. You run away, not into a monster. Lackadaisical cover by Twitch. If he'd have put his body weight across Cole, this could have been it. He chose to be cocky about it, and it could cost him. Although, the way this is going, it might just be that he's playing with his food. Full Nelson. I don't know if he wants to win, he wants to cause pain. Wide open. Holding Cole in the Full Nelson, just so Cobalt can smash him in the face. Open shot, Cole unable to defend himself, inches away from a tag. Cobalt challenging Cole to make the jump for it. Imagine being in the ring with Twitch and he tags out and brings in Cobalt. Taunting, uh, yeah, bad for it to worse, but they're ta taunting Aaron Cruz. Rocking a hard place. Cole, headlock on Archie. That rear chin lock, pull him back. Taking all the oxygen out, trying to stop the blood flow. And this is after minutes of, of being beaten, of being pulverized non-stop. Cole off the ropes, looking for a hurricane runner. He gets caught! Oh no, this is not where you want to be. Mounted up, power slam by Cobalt. The vibration of that slam this reverberated through my feet. I cannot believe the heart of Archie Cole. This kid will fight and fight and fight. That was, how is this ring standing? How is this building standing? How are they standing? He hit him hard. Cole can kick out all night as much as he wants, but unless he gets a tag, I don't feel like the Flying Aces can get back in this one. They need to fly away. Twitch back in the ring again. Head into the turnbuckle. It's effective. Twitch launches Cole across the ring. Looking for that shoulder tackle. Cole gets the knee up though, rocking the jaw again. Float over. Super kick to Twitch. Cole now finding a bit of breathing space. Like a deer in the headlights. Go for the tag, Cole. What a springboard moonsault from the second row. And this may be his chance. Fly, fly, fly. Get a tag, run home, 50-50. Call a friend, ask the audience. You need help and you need it now. All right, Chris Tarrant, calm down. Tag into Aaron Cruz. Fresh man in the ring. The speed, the athleticism, drop kick to Cobalt. Running European uppercut. Back elbow, trapping Cobalt in the corner. Sending the big man, big man reverses. Just too much weight. Cruz avoids the splash. You oh, magnificent. Christian kick. Lines up, shoulder tackle. Calling for it. Flipped over Cobalt. Head of steam, avoids a wild clothesline. Knee. That's it, Cobalt unconscious. That knee. Can he get him? This could be a mistake tagging Cole back in this quickly. What this kid's got balls. One time. Roll by Cole. Two of them to pin him. Both been in the cover, but it's broken Twitch up by Twitch. Up off. Cole. And is that their chance just gone? Cole and Cruz now laying in the forearms of the big man. He avoids and bashes their heads together. Meeting of the minds. The monsters are not even barely taken off their feet. Cole sent into Cobalt. Head smashed off of the turnbuckle. He just threw him into Twitch. The monsters of the apocalypse taking turns on the flying aces. Corner splashes. Sends Cruz to the outside. Just one big shove. I do not feel good for Archie Cole now. Lights out. Bodo Bob in the center of the ring, and this is done. Cole with a hell of a beating. They put up a good in. fight. 
the monsters of the apocalypse come out with a victory. Hell of a fight by the Flying Aces, but they could not overcome the monsters. And Cole were ready to go. He's caused his pain. He's finished. He's happy. Hell of an effort by the Flying Aces. But these two big men, just too much to overcome. They don't need to be ashamed though, they put in a hell of a fight. Their chances will come, they're still early in their career, but this is the time of the monster. Credit where credit's due. The Flying Aces put up a good fight. I heard the monster say they're going to Croydon there, I don't know what they're going for. I'm coming to your house. No one goes there. Credit where credit's due, the flying ace for a good fight. But the monsters, the monsters do what monsters do. The monsters are monstering. The flying ace is getting a well-deserved round of applause from the FPW faithful. Hell of a match, hell of a tag team match. We've got three big matches for you in the second half. David Francisco versus Paul Robinson. Nightshade versus Nina Samuels. And the A7 versus the East City Sovereigns. One more tag team match. And this time it's the main event. They're going to need more than the pass for those two boys. Welcome back to FPW Schools in. I'm Bobby Davis, joined by Big Rich. Thank you very much, Bobby. Nicest thing you ever said to me. I am looking forward to this next fight here this afternoon. Singles action coming up next. The centerpiece, David Francisco, looks to take on the British icon, Paul Robinson. Francisco, a veteran of this game as well. 15 years long in the two. The case here. Look at his suave, look at Debonair. Oh, you gotta love him. Beautiful. He, what a handsome man. Has he just got out of the shower? What's going on? He's taking his time. He's dripping with charisma. He's, he's certainly taking his time, staring out the FBW faithful. <laughs> the FBW fans telling David Francisco exactly what they think of him. Mr. Francisco, I like to call him. He deserves the respect. 15 year veteran. David Francisco has got a lot going for him. He's been in this game a long time. One thing he doesn't have going for him is that attitude that he wears all over his face. I've got to say it, his attitude stinks. I think he's was rather fantastic, thank you very much. Coming up short a couple of shows ago, against Charles Samuels for the FPW title. And if I know Francisco, and unfortunately I do, he's gunning for that title one more time. Well, he's got a challenge in front of him that isn't going to be easy. One of the toughest men in British wrestling, and I, I better watch my tongue, maybe the toughest man in British wrestling, Paul Robinson. I've seen David Francisco in several situations, several matches, and he gets better and better and better. So what if he lost the last time? There's no guarantees that he'll lose again. He is a winner. Can you hear that audience reaction for Francisco? They're saying, ooh. No, they're saying boo. Because they're impressed. This I know you when I hear one. Our first show from the Carshall and Sports College for Boys. And the audience letting David know exactly what they think. David doesn't care, his ego's so big that a few boos are not going to damage it. Reveling. As it should be. Reveling in the hatred from this crowd. Mr. Francisco, give it to them. I don't understand this crowd. A 15 year veteran comes out and they boo him. And what, about this, no, what about this chant? In no other industry would a 15 year vet get, get booed. David Francisco does not look as worried as he should. That's my name, Bobby. Well done. Great job. I know your name. I'm, I'm just telling everyone how worried you should be about Paul Robinson. I'm jealous. That Mr. Francisco has nothing to worry about. Oh, 
At least I've got a few fans, I'm glad you have it. Here he comes, Paul Robinson. Fans are overrated. We saw him earlier in the show, saving his buddy Malik from a potential career-ending injury at the hands of Connor Mills, tying his leg up in that school desk, crushing, but it crushed the ankle if it wasn't for Robbo. But has he put a marker on his back? Here he is, Paul Robinson, FPW legend, British wrestling legend, coming into the first FPW show at Carshorton College. I appreciate his toughness, I appreciate his, his, his metal, but is his head in the game? He was out earlier, he was out earlier talking and getting in the business of Connor Mills. Is he focused here? Or is part of his head still stuck on what Connor Mills will or will not do to him? Will there be a response from Connor Mills? We do not know. Hey, if Connor Mills, the only man on the FPW roster that I think may, and this is a may, may have a chance in a fight against Robbo, in a straight fight, is Connor Mills. But even then, I think my money's on Robbo. You have money. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a, a tough fight here this evening. Two established veterans going head to head here this afternoon. David Francisco looks confused at the reaction that Paul Robinson's got. As he should be. Paul Robinson, legend, veteran, been in the UK seat for a long time. Paul Robinson comes out here in his jeans and his trainers and his chain and his, his, his very casual. And David Francisco is suave. He comes out, he's, he's, he's got his ring attire, his hair's flowing. Where's the stuff? There's two, th there's two things I'll say about David Francisco. Unbelievable. Go, go and get his robe. Why don't you go get it? You love him so much. One thing I will say. I can't leave you here alone, can I? One thing I will say about that ring jacket, it is a very nice ring jacket. And another thing I'll say about David Francisco, what's he calling me out for? I didn't do nothing. Oh, I'll go and get it myself then, shall I? I'm here doing my job. I think we've got some ring crew going. Finally, you can't get the staff these days. Well done, one job. David Francisco finally gets a member of staff to take away his ring jacket. Francisco smiling when Paul Robinson's opposite on the opposite side of the ring to him. That is a mistake if you ask me. Smiling at Paul Robinson is just going to annoy him. Why are you not joining him in the wrestling job, Big Rich? I have a job to do. Come on, this time, one more time. Wrestling! Paul Robinson. You are despicable. Paul Robinson is loved here in FPW. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, he needs it, he needs it. David Francisco not willing to play into the game for the FPW fans. Tie up in the center of the ring. Francisco is a, he's a, he's the bigger man in this match, using that size to push Robinson. Last thing you want to do though is piss Robinson off. He is, like Tap I said. Tap him on his head, make sure he's still awake. Paul Robinson is the toughest man in British wrestling. Do not do that, David Francisco. That is a mistake. Are you telling Sir David what to do? When did he get knighted? He was born that way. Tie up in the center of the ring. Francisco shoots half, he's round the back. Matt return. One thing I'll say for David, he is a technically sound wrestler. Francisco! <laughs> He's so technically sound that he is. Uh, he runs a pro wrestling school, he teaches the next generation, but I think that just inflates his ego even more. Tie up again in the centre of the ring. Tight headlock by Francisco. You call it ego, I call it momentum. Robo though, holding onto the waist. Great technique. Tie in the centre, Francisco. Francisco's got the ear! Oh, yes. Headlock takeover in the centre of the ring. Robo grounded by Francisco. From the air to the headlock to the mat ground wrestling, beautiful technician. If I'm not wrong, this is the first time meeting between Francisco and Robinson. They even really know what to expect from each other in a hands-on capacity. But Francisco really, really, I mean, going low to do so, but tying up Paul Robinson at the minute. It's amazing that Paul Robinson called, called the wrestling charm, but Francisco is actually doing the wrestling. Robinson, handstand, gets out of the headlock. There it is again. Francisco <laughs> making the biggest mistake of his life. He rested slap. his cheeks there. There you go. Do not slap Paul Robinson. 
Francisco sends Robertson off the ropes, looks for a clothesline, catches Robin right in the face. European uppercut. Kick to the gut. Francisco now getting some momentum behind him. And a clothesline by Robbo. And another one. Chad is here, Francisco, who swings wildly. Spring ball cross body. Paul Robinson found his footing, found the momentum in this match. David Francisco looks shook, runs in low bridge by Robinson. Lands on his feet. What a professional. Robinson getting the crowd behind him. Vaulting body press, wipes out Francisco on the outside. Paul Robinson is in control of this one, Rich. But for how long? Robbo sends Francisco back to the ring, heads to the top rope. We know how comfortable he is throwing a fist and jumping from the ropes. Flying elbow, flying clothesline. These are very high risk moves and they don't, they don't always pay off. Paid off this time though, didn't they? For a two count, it's close. Robinson has such a variety of moves in his arsenal. I think Francisco thought Robinson's a brawler, Robinson's a high flyer. Let me go technical. Not thinking Robinson can hang. And damn, Rob Robbo can hang. Stun gun by Francisco. Off the ropes. Big boo. Robinson turned inside out. And the momentum has switched once again. Francisco knee drop to the chest, right on the heart. Robbo dropped to the same spot. There is an element of grit that David Francisco dishes out very rapidly, very, very quickly off the freak of nowhere. The way Robbo landed there, that neck breaker was vicious. Yes. Is this a mistake by Francisco taking the time to taunt the FPW fans when Paul Robinson is down? Stay on top of him, Francisco, if you want any chance of winning this match. You may think so, but Paul Robinson feeds off this crowd, feeds off their energy. If, if, if David Francisco can get to them and discourage them, he could very much take control of this game mentally. Francisco, flying elbow. Yes! Ducks Robbo on his head. Into the cover, this could be over. There's something very sinister about picking a man up above, his, above your head and dropping him on his back. It looks simple, but it's extremely effective. David Francisco has maintained some firm control on this match. Gets Robbo back up to his feet. Sends Robbo across the ring. Francisco lines up. Back elbow by Robinson. Boots up. Francisco now just coming in too wildly. Robbo going for a blockbuster, but David Francisco caught him in the suplex. What power by Francisco. Radical suplex. Slowing Robbo down. Every Absolutely. time Robbo flies back, David Francisco finds a way to stop him. I don't know about you, but I sense, just, I, I sense a, 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 a new gust of wind in every wrestler here this evening. We're in a new building, FPW, here in Carshalton College, and there's new energy, there's new, everyone wants to impress. The crowd are up for it. And ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing some of the best wrestling here this afternoon. David Francisco now. Looking to stretch out Robinson, pulling on his ear. He's just making sure that he's still, he's still with us. Well, that's one way of putting it. I don't think that is actually what he's doing. I think he's cheating, grabbing the nose, grabbing the eyes, grabbing the ears of Robbo. The ref was talking, and David Francisco is making sure Paul Robinson can hear if he wants to quit. What a gentleman. You are. You have the most warped views of anything I've ever seen. And so do you with your shorts. I'm going to come in a full suit next time. Francisco, the Robinson biting the hand of David Francisco. It is Halloween after all. David Francisco got in some of his own medicine. Robbo going the low row, scoop slammed by Francisco, off the ropes. Drop, leg drop in the center of the ring. Robbo, that experience, rolls his shoulder away from the canvas, making it harder for Francisco to get that pin. That, le that leg drop was Holt Hogan-esque. Don't drop that man's name. Francisco all over Robinson at the minute. The fans firmly behind you. Hear the chance of let's go Robbo. Francisco sends Robinson into the corner. Francisco running, head of steam, jumping elbow. Loading up Robbo, looking for a back suplex. Robinson lands on his feet, dropping right on the chin. The athleticism of Paul Robinson is unbelievable for a man known for his brawling. Do not deny this man's athleticism, his high flying ability. Robinson is good on so many levels. This match is going back and forth. Four. Referee having a hard time now. The last thing you want to see is a count out. Yeah, you don't want this match ending with both men getting counted out. 
but who's going to get back to their feet? It's an old cliche, but they're going to have the advantage. David Francisco checking for his teeth, looking annoyed that he's had to be slowed down by Robinson. Forearm. Gives him a bump to the face for his troubles. <laughs> this match has gotten dirty fast. David Francisco made, made a, a rod for his own back. Fighting dirty with Paul Robinson, that's a mistake. Loading up. Robinson head by the hand of David Francisco. Have you ever seen anything like it? Hurricane Rana. How tough is Paul Robinson? Head of steam. Robinson launched outside. Right hand. Springboard out to the centre. Moonsault. Francisco catching him. DDT by Robinson. What a reversal. Tornado DDT. Francisco doesn't know where he is. David during the car short. Oh, what a kick. That tornado kick on the back of the neck. Francisco might be out. There was not a lot of conviction in that kick out, if you ask me, Rich. He's saving his energy. Doesn't matter how you kick out, as long as you do kick out, that's the main thing. Come on, David. Ignore this crowd. Robbo pulling Francisco towards the corner. Saying he's going to go up top. Paul Robinson flies with the best of them. Heading up onto the turnbuckles. Top rope. Moves on. Francisco, no one in the pool, moves out of the way. Robinson lands with his stomach. Ever stone kick into the cover. One, two. Robinson just too tough, kicks out with a millisecond to spare. That Everstone kick has won David Francisco many matches in the last year or so. The crowd shouting, you can't beat him at David Francisco. And David looking like he believes it now. What is he going to do? Formulating new plans. Francisco loads up Robinson. What's he looking for? Power bomb? Power driver, maybe? If this crowd think they can get in the mind, David Francisco have another thing coming. Robert All he Robinson will do is take it out. Ring. One, two. Take it out on Paul Robinson. Robinson wasn't able to hook the neck. Doesn't matter. Low drop kick. Lines up one more time. Look for a stomp. David catches him. Power bomb. Center of the ring. Rolls Robinson through, could have gone for the cover, is that a mistake? Francisco, ahead of steam. Lariat with his, that's his favoured left side. And Lariat takes down Robinson, this could be it. Robinson just raising that right shoulder, not the most conviction in the kick out, but the grit and determination coming through. He dug deep to get that one up. Look at the look on David Francisco's face. And both men now digging deep. Francisco grabbing the nose of Robinson again. Francisco, now I've got the chain that's around Robbo's neck. Mm. Shot to the gut. That made my stomach hurt. And a second a shot to the chin. David powering Robinson up onto the top turnbuckle. Setting him up for a superplex, maybe. These men have given us up everything. And just to think for one moment, he's punched him in the chin after throwing him around. That hurts more. David loading up Paul Robinson, look for a suplex. Robinson links his feet around that second rope, not letting David superplex him. Hits David in the gut, fighting back. Robbo will not be superplexed. Nipple tweak by Robinson. Hey David, you want Where's to- Where's the referee when you need him? You want to take the away, Francisco. Robbo will do it with the best of them. Second rope, spear, spear taking down Francisco. Robinson now looking to aim one out for the victory. Oh my God, Connor Mills. He put a tiger on his back, I told you. Connor Mills distracts Paul Robinson into the cover. Deep cover by Francisco, he's got the tights. He had, he had Robbo's jeans. Cheap victory for David Francisco, thanks to Connor Mills. Mills distracts him, Paul Robinson. There's no way that you get into the interfere with Connor Mills' match and not expect him to retaliate. David Francisco looking smug as anything. You won because of Connor Mills. Connor Mills did nothing. Connor Mills distracts Paul Robinson. Paul Robinson was about to hit that stomp, about to finish David Francisco off. Got distracted because Connor Mills comes out. David Francisco takes advantage, rolls up Robbo, holds onto the jeans. FPW has a plethora of wrestlers. You cannot let anyone distract you. You cannot let anything distract you. When it's your match and the lights are on, you got to be focused. That, it's a W in the record books for David Francisco. But the moral victory is Paul Robinson. Paul has the mic in the centre of the ring. 
You gotta think he's gonna address the issues of Connor Mills. The intensity wow. on Robbo's face. First off, a block of juice. Oh, you're going to win that one. Three <laughs> shots. Let's get angry. Call off Mills. Rock, rock, rock. Tip this one side, man. All you point to do is get it right in this and then you feel yourself in the wrong axis. So, guys, we put it to you. Action up. Destroy each other. to FPW schools and we've got another singles match for you. Nightshade takes on the returning Nina Samuels. Rich, I'm told FPW needs more Nina. And then Nina's what we need is Nina's what we're gonna get. I put to Nina in the back. He said that she doesn't like your shorts. That wasn't very nice. Leave right your knees. I also don't believe that anyone will talk to you backstage, though. So. Last time I saw you, you were sitting in a porter cabin eating, eating a sandwich on your own. How much people do I need to eat a sandwich with? Hey, people normally you know, sit and eat with their friends. Anyway, enough about you. Nina Samuels making her FPW debut here at the Cross Short and Sports College for boys. This is a big debut for FPW. Nina cutting her teeth around the country, around the world, wrestling in the biggest promotions. Recently off the back of an AEW debut. I'm a big fan of Nina. Nina staring at the entranceway, waiting for her opponent. The insidious nightshade. Here she is, another person fresh off of making their mark on the British scene. Not only has been cutting the teeth, she has been creating havoc and mayhem everywhere she goes. Nightshade. Off the scene, Nightshade accompanying Twitch. She did today, she is focused on her own match. Big match against Nina Samuels. 
There's nothing like a wrestler who is composed and confident in themselves to get in the face of the fans and tell them exactly what they think. The fans booing Nightshade as if she could care anyway. Lena Samuels looking ready for this one. Nightshade, once she stepped through those ropes, didn't take her eyes off of Nina. If looks could kill. Nina, though, the intimidating presence of Nightshade doesn't seem intimidated at all. But Nina smiling in the face of Nightshade. Sometimes people smile when they're scared. Oh, that's why you were smiling when the Monsters of the Apocalypse were here. Let's not talk about that. Nightshade already getting into it with the FPW fans. <laughs> Nina letting Nightshade know that she is on the Nina Samuels show now. We'll see about that. Samuels, ready to go. Nightshade needs to get her attention back in the ring. Here we go. Nina Samuels debuting for FPW. These are the size of each other up. Put an elbow in the middle of the ring. Very strategic. Nightshade's probably going to have a strength advantage, but the uh, veteran, the experience advantage is going to be with Nina Samuels. Nightshade using that power to push Nina into the corner, though. You have to take every advantage you have and use it to your full capacity. Nightshade letting the fans know she'll do what she wants, apparently. Within the rules, she might get disqualified. I As she should. Nina not intimidated one bit by Nightshade. Shoots half, flicks a roller up, baby. Nightshade holds on to the top rope. Shoulder tackle by Nightshade. She's got the tool, but does she back it up? Yes. Nina finding out who exactly she's in the ring with. The power of Nightshade on another level. Back in the center of the ring. Look for a corner and elbow. This time Nina avoids. Ties up the arm into a headlock. Nina now taking control. You control the head, you control the body, Rich. Yes, indeed. Nightshade tries to reverse. Nina grounds herself so she doesn't have to let go of the headlock. It's a very true strategy. Let's see how long she can maintain it for. I've seen Nightshade before and she is, she is resilient. Nightshade gets the power. Nina tries to tackle. Nightshade does not work. These are two powerful women. Nina to try one more body. time. Sidestep by Nightshade. Drop down by Nina. Impressive athleticism. Up and over. Hip toss. No, Nightshade grounds herself. But into that guillotine headlock. Nightshade too strong. Lifts up Nina. Arm ringer. Hey, cartwheel by Nina. And a drop kick. Sends Nightshade reeling. Nina lines up. Head of steam. Back elbow. Back elbow again. Gonna load up Nightshade. Can she manage it? Nightshade fighting. Elbows to the jaw. That was a straight right hand. Nina had the advantage with a quick strike attack. She decided to, to pick her up and, and go to the power game. That is not her game, ladies and gentlemen. Sent on a low drop kick by Nina Samuels into the cover. Two count. Nina now, off the ropes. Look for a scissors kick, Nightshade avoids it. Grabs the hair, eats a right elbow for her trouble. Nightshade loads up Nina Samuels, Samoa drop in the center of the ring. Look for the cover, Nina tries Massive. to roll the way. Into the cover. On the half of the leg. Nina showing her experience, they're trying to roll away, not allowing Nightshade to cover. Nightshade still pulling her back for it, but Nina tried. That was an interesting cover there. Had a, had, had a look. Closely hooked, her shoulders covered with her body weight. Nightshade now just wearing out Nina in the corner. 
Nightshade, I think she might be claiming that she's done. Nina is done, wiping her hands of her. Nina's gonna have something to say about that, challenging Nina to get in the ring. There's a psychological advantage that you have when you taunt your opponent. And Nina knew it was a trap, was gonna try to fight from the ground up, but Nightshade didn't allow it. Just stamping on the spine of Nina Samuels. Nina going for the legs, trying to wear out that thigh muscle, but the back club says no more of that. Nightshade launches Nina at a clothesline. That is a massive clothesline. Another sense on Nina must be struggling to breathe out into the cover. Nightshade a bit loose on that cover. If she'd have actually hooked the leg properly, got some, some contact on the shoulders, she may have been able to keep her down. And a sense on like that will hurt your spine, will hurt your ribs, that will do all sorts of things to your body. Back club. Nina Samuels fighting from the ground up now, not being able to get much offense at all. That headbutt, the, arm, the, the palm strike straight into the stomach. Nina off the ropes, avoid the clothesline. Look for a crossbody. Nightshade just too strong. Effortlessly, effortlessly. All the way slam. To pick someone up and throw them over your head. Ladies and gentlemen, that is strength. What a great move by Nightshade. Takes aim, double knees, Meteora to the back. Oh, no punishment to the back. Into the cover again, double stack. Nina kicks out again. A very lucky day to be covered by Nightshade. How much more punishment can Nina take? I know she's tough, but Nightshade is no frail opponent. Nina whips the throw again. The power of Nightshade using that turnbuckle as a tag team partner, smashing Nina's back off it. The power, unreal. Let's go, Nina. Oh. Gonna go for it again. There it is. That spine ricocheting off that top turnbuckle. If it works once, it'll work twice. Nina Samuels now looking worse for wear. Nightshade staying on top of her. The crowd letting Nightshade know what they think. Nina though, fighting spirit. I thought they were talking to Nina. You know they weren't talking to Nina. There you go, let's go Nina. I took no survey, neither did you my son. Swings wildly, misses Nina Samuels blocks. These forearms to the jaw, rocking Nightshade. Tries to Irish whip Nightshade, but Nightshade grabbing the top rope, not letting it happen. Kick to the gut by Nina Samuels. This time Nightshade will go. No, reversal. Nina holds on to the top. Boots Nightshade in the face. I think she ate it. Nightshade I think it just fired her up. Oh, great drop toe hold by Nina Samuels. Now taking an advantage. Pulling on the face of Nightshade. Nightshade's been taking the low row too. Nina's going to do it too. Now locking Nina into the top rope. Boot to the spine, stretching Nightshade out. Where's the referee when you need him? Unbelievable. Nightshade falling out of the ropes into the cover. Kicks out at 2.5. Nina Samuels looking a bit exasperated. She needs to dig deep, find something in her arsenal that can keep Nightshade down. Nightshade showing some toughness now. Nina digging down deep. Nina heads to the top rope. Nightshade finding her feet. Nina over the top, rolls through. Nightshade trying to knock her off. Roundhouse kick. Nightshade looking dizzy. This time Nina's gonna go again. Feynman's carry. I can't believe she picked her up. Nightshade out the back. Pushes Nina Samuels off. Spear by Nightshade. Nina Samuels' momentum is gone. This match is over. Her. Samuels just holding the right shoulder up. It was close. Nightshade. Looking for that final blow. What could keep Nina Samuels down? Shoulder tackle. And a second. Just taking the air out of Nina Samuels. Picks her up with ease. Picks her up with absolute ease. Just slaps her for measure. Nina loaded on that top turnbuckle. 
Nightshade, possibly looking for a superplex. Do you know what it's like to be slapped in your chest? Oh, and I don't want to know. Behave yourself then, Sunshine. Let's hear what Paul Roberts did off you, all you said about him. Let's see what he said. You're a mean man. It's Sunday for crying out loud. Nightshade, Nina Samuels fighting it out on the top rope. Back club to Nightshade. The fuds that those punches are Samuel. making on the back. The Crescent are horrendous. Bomb. But no. She holds on. Oh, she carries her. Nightshade. Unbelievable. Oh, bomb by Samuels. Stacks up Nightshade. This could be it. And it's power bomb. What a power bomb by Nina Samuels. She gets the win in her FPW debut. The fans have gone wild. <laughs> That powerball is humongous. Great move by Samuels. Wins her FPW debut. Nightshade tried to stop the sunset flip bomb, but Samuels readjusted. Lifts Nightshade up and power bombs her in the center of the ring. She almost put her through the ring. That was the meanest power bomb. Let's say it one more time. FPW needs more Nina. tag team titles the East City Sovereigns taking on the 8-7 and apparently we're under 8-7 rules and here they are the East City Sovereigns RJ Singh the veteran Jordan Saeed the powerhouse this team been formidable in FPW looking to reclaim the tag titles we have former champions here coming together it's going to be a good team they are nothing compared to the 8 7. Let's not be kidding ourselves. Do not underrate this team. They've been together a while. They both bring great aspects of the team. Jordan Saeed, so powerful. RJ Singh, the, the longest running veteran on the FPW roster. R, RJ Singh has forgotten more stuff than most of this roster knows. The 8-7 have been running Russia over FPW for the last few months, claiming the tag titles, claiming the FPW title. But they've got a big challenge ahead of them. The only thing they've got for their advantage is we don't know which two members of the 8-7 are going to be doing this match. 8-7 rules means any two members of them can defend the titles. But Big Wavy Roy Johnson is the only man who can defend the FPW title. That's right. Here they come. After running roughshod for so many months, the 8-7, are they going to hit a brick wall with the East City Sovereigns? Here they are. And this is why we're here, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we're here. Alexander Roth, Big Wavy Roy Johnson, Kieran Corrupt, it's looking like from who's in their gear, Big Wavy and Alexander Roth are going to be the ones defending the tag titles. Alexander 
The FPW fans letting the 8 7 know exactly what they think. Rob visiting us at the table. I was a bit worried there. Visiting me. Don't you ever, ever, ever put yourself over like that. No one cares about you, sir. Lord, you are hard work. The 8 7 pointing out sides in the audience that are not very friendly towards them. There's one over there that's called, says Burton Ernie. Jealousy is rife in this building. The crowd charging for the East City Sovereigns. Roy Johnson taking a sign from a As fan. he should do. He is the world champion. He is the heavyweight champion. And another fan took the sign back. The FBW champion looking annoyed and frustrated at the fans. This is not a good start. This is not how you want to start a match. You do not want to let the fans get under your skin. Roy Johnson now going to start this match thinking about how the fans have booed him, how they've got those signs. Look at Roy Johnson. The anger etched on his face. Ross still trying to play it cool. Which is unusual. Ross usually the hothead of the 8-7. There they are, the FBW champion, the FBW tag team champions, the 87, Roy Johnson, the champ. Can anyone stop them? Uh, the fans are allowed to chant exactly what they want. They're going to chant for the East City Sovereigns. That's the common point we have to realise that they are unstoppable. to win. Look at Roth carrying both FPW tag titles. Roy Johnson getting into it with the Winning is winning. Roy Johnson putting the FPW in the face of John Saeed. That is a lot of gold that the 8-7 are carrying. Some might say that it wasn't honestly earned. but they've kept it honestly. Keep your eyes on Kieran Corrupt. He's been getting involved in the 8-7 matches for the last couple of months, causing all kinds of chaos. Causing all kinds of corruption, if you will. The priority here, ladies and gentlemen, is the tag team championships and winning. Referee Kyle having trouble holding up the gold. There they are, the tag team titles. Ross getting in the face of referee Kyle. No need to get someone to take those tag belts away. East City Sovereigns not, do not look intimidated, not worried about the man on the outside. Looking like RJ Singh wants to start this with Roy Johnson. Ross the it's a brawl! Let's go! This is Left and right and hits and, and headbutts. The, the 8 7 on the back foot. The EC Summit's taking control. Johnson sent to the outside. Roth sent over by John Saeed. And the 8 7 under some early pressure here. But it's fine. They can start quick. They can start slow. Either way, they're finishing, they're finishing strong. Sidewalk slam, elbow drop, double team maneuver by the Sovereigns. This is over. New champions, one second into the match. No, just kicking out. Great advance by the East City Sovereigns. Headbutt by Saeed. Colston, shot punch is heading. No. Saeed threatening to punch Ross heading. And the crowd going to count along. There we go. Oh, the crowd can count, can't they? They stop at 10 because that's the most they can do. So he gets to the 10 count. Roth looking worse for wear already. <laughs> Just stumbling across the ring. Roy Johnson trying to, trying to give uh, Alexander Roth a bit of encouragement. John Say doesn't allow it. Off the ropes. Knee to the back. Saeed, straight right hand to Johnson, getting what he deserves. Beautiful jump kick. 
What a drop kick by Alexander off the momentum of John Say stopped in an instant. Roth, European uppercut, the jaw of John Saeed, Roth, tagging in the FPW champion, big wavy Roy Johnson, going to work the midsection of John Saeed. Kick, after kick, after kick, after kick. The two powerhouses of their representative, I, I, I can talk about it. The two powerhouses of their teams, getting into it, Roth, choking John Saeed, the referee stopping RJ Singh getting involved. RJ, RJ Singh needs to control himself. RJ Singh doing John Saeed no favours by coming into the ring. Trying to cheat. Jordan, Jordan. RJ Singh trying to get the fans behind his tag partner. Saeed trying to work the cut of Big Wavy, but Big Wavy just with a back up. Now choking him out on the bottom rope. Big Wavy Roy Johnson is a huge man. Imagine someone with that power, that size, standing on your neck. Jumping on his back, standing on his neck. Squeeze in his throat. European uppercut. Big Wavy mocking RJ Singh. Jordan Saeed looking worse for wear. Normally it's a European uppercut. When you got arms that big, that could be a global uppercut. He is massive. Double team by the 8-7. The Enziguri elbow combo. Now Alexander Ross is working the gut of John Saeed. Chest chop. Ross is fully recovered now. He's coming to get some payback. A bit of revenge. Alexander Ross is a hothead. And you know that that beating of John Saeed later in the beginning of the match is only going to get on his nerves. Jordan now fighting back. Marvel chest chop. And he's ah. the eyes. <laughs> You can't hit what you can't see. I think something's wrong with your throat. That laugh is dirty. Roth trying to load up John Say. John just too strong. Right, work, sir. Please keep your personal preferences to yourself. Saeed tried to evade it, but a discus forearm by Roth. Saeed manages to reverse. Roth off the ropes. Big back body drop by Saeed. Saeed, that last ounce of energy, looking for Singh. Gets the tag to RJ Singh, here comes the veteran. The King RJ Singh wipes out Johnson, goes through the right legs. What a drop kick by Singh. Ahead of steam, springboard. The, the agility of RJ Singh, unreal. Adding new moves to his arsenal all the time. RJ Singh taking on all comers. RJ Singh taking on one too many. This is on by Roth. RJ Singh follows him in. Oh, beautiful, beautiful diversion. Roth, the just kidding clothesline, moves out of the way. Short lariat, now wearing out Singh with the elbows to the temple. Holds onto the ankle so Singh can't even look for the tag. Tags in big wavy, great tag team continuity by the 8-7. Massive elbow drop to the spine of Singh. The 8-7, Roy Johnson in control. Straight right hand to RJ Singh. Say it right, Big Roy Johnson. Say it right, Big Wavy Roy Johnson. RJ Singh now, set off the road by Johnson, look for a back body drop. But sunset flip attempt by RJ Singh. Johnson says no thank you with a right hand to the face. Johnson's fire is just too strong to be taken down. Too strong. The power dragging RJ out by the neck. Another uppercut. The explosiveness of Big Wavy sits out on the spine. Is intimidating and dances just to top it off. And again, standing on the neck of his opponent, the big man wearing down RJ Singh. Roy Johnson now pulling RJ Singh up. RJ fighting from the ground, stopped with a knee to the chest. The power of Roy Johnson sends RJ Singh into the corner. Snap there out. Diving oh. punch. That punch, a trademark of Roy Johnson's, may have knocked RJ Singh out into the cover. Johnson didn't look, hook the leg, allowing Johnson to kick out, using, uh, allowing RJ Singh to kick out, I say, using his legs. Singh is showing some toughness. Most men would have been knocked out for the count with that punch in the back of the head, but Singh is showing he's got a bit of fight in him. You do not spend as much time in this game as RJ Singh without being tough. 
Now Roy Johnson loading up RJ Singh, probably looking for a power slam. Singh slips out the back. Waist lock. Johnson too strong. Just bundles RJ Singh into the corner. Singh avoids. There's that veteran instinct. Johnson now. Look at that. Looking to roll over. Gets him in it. Hurricane Rana. Again, RJ Singh adding new moves to his arsenal all the time. Roth illegally comes Wait, Is it too little too soon? Roth back in now. RJ Singh reaching for the tag. Roth illegally in this match. Enter Guri by RJ Singh. Tag to John Saeed, the big man of the EC Sovereigns. Clothesline, clothesline. Johnson doesn't go down though. This time he's got to get him. De de Decides to send him out of the ring instead. Chop to Alexander Roth. <laughs> Some momentum being built. Saeed launches Roth. Roth tries to go over. Jo uh, Saeed predicts it though. Loads up. Power slam on Roth. Saeed going to go for the win. Go for the tag team titles. But Johnson breaks it up. What a power slam by John Saeed. Planting Alexander Roth in the centre of the ring. you got to think the only reason the 8-7 are still tag champions is because Roy Johnson got back in there to break up the pin. Johnson now, just a straight forearm to Saeed. High knee by Roth. We've seen this flurry of offense before. Launched up, spear by Roth into the cover by Johnson using all his body weight. Saved by RJ Singh. This was over. Seconds ago, we saw the EC Sovereigns leading win. Now we just see the 87 leading win. Tag team wrestling at his best. Yes, it is. Have each other's back. It's called it for the DTT. The That's a big neck to put the DDT on. The best DDT in the game, RJ Singh. Roy Johnson avoids it though. Driving <laughs> back elbow by RJ Singh, but Roth is waiting for him. Kick to the gut, calling for the DDT one more time. Roth avoids, looks for a lariat, misses. Roth, centre rope, spring ball. Beautiful. <laughs> That athleticism of Roth, unmatched, amazing cutter. But John Saeed says, not on my day. Aeroplane spin by John Saeed. Death Valley driver at the end. John Saeed fired up, but doesn't see Johnson behind him. Just a what a headbutt. Headbutt to the jaw. Loads up Saeed, he's going to go for it. The pounce. Roy Johnson pounces like no one else. All four men on the mat. Who is going to win this tag team title match? The FPW Tag Champions, the 8-7, are really The East City Sovereigns need to get back to their feet if they've got any chance of becoming tag champs. This has been a fight. Two teams wanting it, two teams desperately putting everything on the line. Roy Johnson now got RJ Singh by the strap. Johnson's up, Roth is up. Roth, Roth getting in the face of referee Kyle, who's trying to say get the legal man in the ring and the illegal man outside. Looking to load up RJ Singh for a double suplex. But John Said is there to save his tag partner. Double kick to the gut. Double axe double, handle. Double double axe handle. Atomic drop. Johnson holds up. Uh, Singh holds on to Johnson. Loads him up. Getting as much momentum as possible. Heart attack by the East City Sovereigns. Into the cover. This could be it. Kicks out. Big wave, he kicks out. Say what you want about the 8-7. They cheat to win, but you cannot doubt that they are tough, tough men. Roy Johnson powering out after the heart attack by the East City Sovereigns. Cheating doesn't guarantee a win. You still got to have the heart. The East City Sovereigns calling for it. John Said looking to load up Big Wavy. RJ Singh got Alexander Roth. Look for that camel clutch. Are they going to cinch it in? Both members of the 8 7 since we got Camel Clutches, the East City Sovereigns. Gonna win this one by submission. Kieran Corrupt though, getting in the face of the East City Sovereigns. They're not, uh, they're not breaking the holds though, not letting Kieran Corrupt distract them. And this is why it's good to have friends. East City Sovereigns, grab it, Kieran Corrupt. In you come, Kieran. Oh no, Kieran's in trouble. Why are they attacking an innocent man? Innocent, he was on the apron trying to distract them. He was encouraging his friends. Uh, that was not a friendly handshake. Oh, uh, here he comes, the king. He's gonna hit the DDT on Kieran Corrupt. Leave him alone, leave him alone. No, you're gonna get what you deserve, Corrupt. There it is. 
DDT, the best one in the game. He broke his neck. Kirika up, barely conscious. Oh, low blows by both members of the 8 7 for the East City Sovereigns. Roth dumps RJ Singh outside. Double team. Headbutt, Superman punch. Saeed is out on his feet. Johnson loads up Saeed. There it is. Concentration for the win. And the 8 7 retain. Following up that big ending DDT combo, the 8 7 retain their tag titles. <laughs> Still to cheat. Kieran corrupts the distraction. The low blows behind the rest back. The chemistry was too much. The tenacity was too much. The strength was too much. The cheating was too much. The eight sevens had so put part the interruption was too much. Uh, the eight seven cheated to win this one. That is not a fair fight. This one was not called down really. The eight seven running rough shot one more time. Alexander Roth demanding that the referee award him the belt and Johnson doing the same. What is, what is wrong with the 8 7? The referee took too long. Oh, Steve Evans is here, co owner of FPW. Samuel's doing there. There's nothing to do with him. The former world champion getting sour, is he? But let's not forget the East, the 8 7 are still the winners. Now, still have all the gold. We'll see who looks like winners. What Shah Samuels, Jordan Saeed, and RJ Singh get hold of the 8 7 next month at FBW Trick or Treat. Why is Shah involved? This thank, is not fair. Thank you for joining us here at FBW Schools in at Carl Shorten Sports College, my boys. We'll see you October 20th for FPW Trick or Treat for EC3 for a TLC match between Connor Mills and Paul Robinson and for a six man tag between the East, East, East City Sovereigns and the 8 7. Thank you for watching FPW. Schools in.